Live from the mainstream cannabis media empire, I'm Travis Lippert, CEO of Verks Unlimited, Limited, better known as Veed Verks. And I'm Michael Miller, International Marketing Director for PanaceaLife.com, CBD manufacturer in beautiful uh, Louisville, Colorado. I almost said Boulder. Uh, because our uh, golden, because of how fast we're growing, we just uh, had to purchase a 43,000 square foot facility. And we're looking for like minded companies to come into our facility and work with us. Nice. Beautiful day out there, by the way. It is a beautiful day. <laughs> you know, it's what? Almost 60 degrees, blue skies. You got to love it. It's December and it's just beautiful out. Did you see? I got. I went to Kansas and back and didn't get pulled over this time by the Kansas Highway Patrol for not doing anything. But uh -huh. I, I did buy a, a tax stamp. Yeah, what is this? It's You posted in Kansas, it. In Kansas, if you spend $10 at this one particular office in Topeka, they'll sell you a, a stamp that will, I guess, if get you wrap it card? around. No, it no. just <laughs> means that they don't up your like misdemeanor to a felony because of this. You're kidding me. Yeah, it's... I for, like that. That's good for 3.5 grams. I, think I was going to ask you, what about a couple pounds? I can't wait still to work? put them. Uh, you got to, <laughs> they sell them in denominations of 10, 20, 50, and, or no, 10, 50, 100, and 1,000, I think. So it's really a get out of ticket or no, a jail no, card? No, it's nothing <laughs> no? like that. It's a scam. It's a way that they also, that they pile extra charges on you. Okay. If you get busted. <laughs> but, um, we have today with us, uh, very special guest. Um, yeah, I've known him for a long time. Good friend. Just mad respect for him. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to bring him on right now. We've got Boo Williams, uh, former. I, I know a lot of people know you because of your career in the NFL. You played for the Saints. Um, and but most of the people who are watching this, I think, probably know you because you're Canna fan and you you're really uh doing important things in the industry and the, and that's why we'd like to talk to you yes he is he's one of the leading advocates you know uh for our industry and we're really fortunate to have you uh, on our show boo man you know what I, I appreciate you guys having me on your show man y'all y'all the ones that make it happen for guys like me man because thing is we need platforms to to get out there and reach a lot of people to 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 help more people. And you guys are providing that, so thanks to you guys. Well, we wouldn't have our show without people like you out there every day, you know, fighting the battle for us, you know, yeah. alongside with us. So it's a pleasure for sure. Yeah. 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 So I read in your bio that you played uh, football at Coffeeville in Kansas, where the Kansas Highway Patrol pulls people yeah. over for their license. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, man, I played uh, I played two years of junior college up there in Coffeeville, Kansas, man, and it was a, a, a great experience. Uh, I had a great coach, uh, head coach of Skip Foster, and my wide receiver coach is uh, Brian Anderson, which is, you know, coached around college football for the Salukis. He's been coaching for, you know, he coached for um, uh, numerous of teams. So, um, you know, with those guys, too, they helped me with a lot of my – you know, with, with my growing as a, as not just as a player, as a person. And then you went to Arkansas Razorback. Yep. That's what's up. Yes, sir. That's what's Arkansas. up. I love the Arkansas Razorback. I always have. My yeah. stepdad was the center yeah. on yeah. Uh, the Razorbacks in like 69 and 70. I think we Did have you a hear little, that, boo? we have a little sugar bowl trophy in our, uh, in our basement in Kansas. <laughs> yes, I, I know all my history, man. Especially when you go into the Arkansas facility, yeah. they have a monument to where you can see all the history from the teams, the championship teams, and um, they put me on the wall of fame out there in, in the um, at the school as well. So now, when guys go to the meeting rooms, they have a, a picture, right, a huge, huge picture of me right in the meeting rooms, and uh, me and a few other guys that are Arkansas greats, uh, Anthony Lucas. Yeah. Um, you know, just to name one, and, and you know, it, it's just been a, a honor, man. I didn't think that, you know, they would honor me in that way, but they have, and you know, I'm just grateful. That's awesome. <laughs> That's really cool. I like shout out to uh, Quentin and Justin, uh, Doc Hollywood. Thanks for tuning in. Please uh, share this out. We got Boo Williams on with us. Isn't Are we crazy? lucky? I love what? it. Yeah. How in the world do you know all these? You know cool what? We people? might actually have some viewers now. <laughs> <laughs> Get the hey, celebrities so, on I, on our show. Well, what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to bring a, a different style 
and a and a different, you know, something different to this industry. Um, you know, everyone, you know, in, in this industry, uh, you know, it's a lot of people in this industry that are doing great things. And I'm just trying to create my own path and especially for athletes to to follow um, because this is something that a lot of us need need to be into because we have to take our health in our own hands. And a lot of athletes are, are going through so much pain, especially not during their career, but after their career. So it's, it's very, very uh, important that we continue to create different products to help us with a lot of our illnesses. Yeah, the <clears throat> beatings that you guys take on the football field are just yeah incredible. And fit, you played, uh, you switched to, didn't you go to tight end when you played for the Saints? Man, you've been doing your research. <laughs> <laughs> my my sister in law Jessica Lott is a huge Saints fan, gigantic oh, Saints okay. fan, and I would I would catch no end of it if yeah. if I didn't read up at least a little bit on on a, your storied past. But you, you, they're having a great season too, unbelievable. Yeah. Drew yeah. Brees is lighting yeah. them up, you know, and that whole team is it's gelled, you know. Right. Yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah, that, that, the season's going real good right now. The season's going real good. The guys only lost. Uh, one game, one or two games, um, right. and especially with my time there, you know, I played there for six years, and the time I spent there, I lot of connections. Um, I met met a lot of people, and and you know, I touched I touched a lot of hearts there. So New Orleans will always have a special place in my heart. Um, a lot of people ask me, man, since you played for the Saints for a long time, the Saints has got to be a team. And I'm like, uh, the Saints are my team. I love them. But, you know, right now I'm a fan of players because, uh, you know, the, the league changes and I know that the players make the league go. And I can't be just a fan of a team because, you know, personally, you know, it's a job. It's a job. For right. us. So we have to, you know, we have to treat it as such. But at the same time, you still keep those connections with the ones you met along the way. Yeah, I, I definitely can. uh uh, understand that uh, you know at my age when you know I used to watch, well I love football I've always loved football but back in the day there was there really wasn't free agency you know your team was your team until they retired and now I understand you know you follow you know who you liked in your college uh, where they got drafted like I, I'm a Kane fan so I, I've always followed the Canes wherever they played you know yeah. and unfortunately I'm a Dolphin fan outside of that miracle in Miami last Sunday How how about that? <laughs> Man, you, hey, you know what? I was part of a miracle uh, ending like that, too, with when we played against Jacksonville. Yeah. Um, we kept tossing the ball back, tossing the ball back. You you know, as a player, sometimes when those plays are called, you know, you work on those plays, but in your mind, you're like, oh, it's probably not going to happen. <laughs> right. But when, yeah, but when it does happen, it's like, we practiced it like that. <laughs> <laughs> it came out just the way we practiced it. Yeah, we practiced yes, it on we, Madden. Uh, <laughs> on Madden. <laughs> yeah. and, and, it's, and it's crazy that you say you're a Miami Hurricane fan because uh, I'm from Tallahassee, Florida. Right. So I, I, I grew up uh, a Florida State Seminole fan. Yeah. Well, yeah. it, it, the, the, you know, there, there was a, always a war every football season in the Miller household because my brother graduated Florida State and half of the family were FSU fans. The other half were UM fans. And then he married a Gator. So, you know, we had, we had the devil's triangle going on every football season, you know? Oh, I know, I I know, I know you did actually, with, with that triangle, Florida State, Florida, Miami. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. All I can say is for a uh, long suffering Chiefs fan, closet Chiefs fan now, since, you know, because all my Chiefs gear has been replaced by Broncos gear. But I'll tell you what, a Patrick Mahomes jersey would look pretty good on me right now. He's a real deal. This, this could be there. This could be the year. Rookie year. Unbelievable. Well, oh, well, I don't know if it's rookie, rookie year, year. It's but first, time, first time starting. Yeah. Right. He's killing it. Oh, it's my amazing. goodness gracious. It's, it's, again, it's like watching a video game. I can't believe how, how yeah, good that it, guy is. Like watch the video game when you when you see him and um you know I, I used to live in Kansas City. Matter of fact, I played for the arena team up there in Kansas City for a year, and um, we went to the championship the year that I went there in '07. And I can tell you that those fans in Kansas City are some of the best fans around. It's one of the loudest stadiums, um, outside stadiums that you can ever, ever run across. And those fans there, they love their Chiefs, their, right. their Kansas City Chiefs football. 
That's right. You know, I've always wondered, being, <laughs> we're going to get into the other stuff, but, <laughs> you know, when you're on the field and the fans on either side are going insane, does it really, is it really hard to hear the guy next to you when you're out there yeah. on the field? Yeah, it, it really is. And um, I was just telling, and I was just telling my girlfriend last night that, you know, playing in Seattle, you know, you can be right next to each other, just as close as you two are to, to each other, and you cannot hear not one <laughs> play call. You can't hear wow. nothing. So we 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 do a lot of things with reading lips, so and do right. a lot of things with audible right. and sign language. So right. therefore, you don't have any type of miscommunication. I love it. Yeah, that's. <laughs> yep. I wonder if that adds up to long term hearing damage, too, among the other things. It, that it it probably does because she calls my name a lot, and I'm like, "Huh? I can't hear you." Yeah. <laughs> I have that problem too. Keep on using that one. You yeah. know, it could get you out of future trouble. Yeah. Maybe I didn't hear that. Yeah, I, I, I just blame I just blame on the football. I just blame I, on the football, and the fact that <laughs> that's it. Uh, so, like, like unfortunately, like many NFL players, your career, um, at least in the NFL, ended with an injury. Yeah, and um, mm -hmm. that's. Uh, really i think that the big platform that you've got uh yeah is you can speak directly to the uh just the beatings that you guys take on the yeah. field um and yeah. uh is that t tell us what happened then after so you played uh with the uh, arena football league in kansas city after you got injured with the saints is that the right order of things yeah yeah and and uh, and the thing is um what a lot of us players go through is that you're you're finished um, before the game is finished with you sometimes, right? And that's sometimes hard to take. A um, lot of lots of guys they can still play mentally, they can still you know get out there and do certain things, but sometimes the body won't let you. And if you're steady getting injured and your body is steady taking a beating, it's hard to stay out there on the field. And one of the best one of the best sayings in professional football is the best ability the best ability is availability. And if you're not available to play, then you're no use to a team. And it's it's sad to say, you know, that that's how it's ran, but you know, it's a business. And you know, uh, I don't think certain players know that it's a business until, you know, they're a couple couple years in the league, and then they found out that hey, this is a business. Um, you know, I, I'm I'm I can be going at any time, and yeah. with an injury. You could definitely be going at any time. I, I don't know if the NFL does it, but, you know, for, you know, football players, I mean, it's just been your whole life, you know, and you get a season ending injury, you know, whether you're with that team the following year or not, they should probably definitely, I think, you know, have some kind of fun to continually take care of you for X amount of years after football. Is there anything out there like that from the NFL? Uh, really? You know, if you if you don't you know you know play enough years to collect your you know to be in the pension plan, there's really no obligation to a team to okay. you. You know, and and I came in as a free agent, so I had to make the team. So I had to come in, establish myself, make a name for myself, and 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 make the team. And you know, by I say by my rookie year, fourth or fifth game, I was starting by by my rookie year. Um, and that was something that, you know, I, I just thought that it was just another level of football. You know, you got high school, college, and then I was thinking that, hey, you're supposed to go to the pros. But, you know, after, you know, my six and seven years, I got to, to realizing that, you know, everyone's not promised to be there because you got people coming to take your position every day. Yes. I, and sometimes the way teams do you um, turns you off to to the sports sometimes because you know even like i said even though it's business some of these teams that you you know you put your heart and soul into and then they turn around and cut you like it's nothing yeah and you know you have to move on to the next team um sometimes you don't even get a chance to go clean out your locker when they trade you or cut you so that's just the nature of the business wow it's, i've seen it enough episodes of heart or yeah is it hard knocks where they show the training yeah. camps for yeah yeah, it's just 
Yeah, the way they cut these guys. It's, it's sad. It's so sad. It yeah. really is. It's, and it's, you put your heart and soul into this, man. Yeah. You put a, put a lot of your time and your energy into and try to try to get to this point because right. unlike right. most professions, we start this profession at an early age. Yeah. We started at five, six years old. So yeah. you've been performing and preparing to get to this level all of your life, not you know, so less than, you know, a person that's graduated from college, don't know what we want to do, and then you go in college a couple of years, oh, this is what I want to go into. But right. that's, it, it's, our, our profession is totally different. So right. that's right. why a lot of guys take it hard when they don't make it or they do make it and then they get cut. Yeah, I can't imagine, you know, being 26, 27, 30, and then all of a sudden the career I've planned on for my whole life has ended. That's got to be just devastating yeah. for a lot of people, anyone in that position, yeah. in or out of sports, got, but definitely in sports. I got into the league when I was 20 years old, and I, yeah. and I retired before I was 28. Yeah. So it's like, okay, I retired at 28. <laughs> yeah. Now what is there to do? Because you've been doing this all of your life. Yeah. And, and so that's when, you know, the, the, the thing of you trying to find your niche in life, trying to find what you like to do, because, you know, in off season, we only have two and a half months of off season. Then it's time to get back to work. So you're trying to cram so much in, in an off season to where when it's, when you're finished with the game, it's like, okay, what do I like to do? What do I want to do? Yeah. <laughs> I can imagine some things that, you know, you and I never had to think about really. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Wow. Wow. So, and, I, I, and I'm, uh, hey, I'm here to state that not every professional athlete makes millions of dollars. Right. Because that is the stigma that we're trying to break because, you know, I, I hate that stigma when people say, oh, this guy must have blew all of his money and this and that. It's like, the guy's been out of the league for 10, 15 years. Yeah. What do you think? Do you think three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars going to last you for 10, 15 years? No. No, it don't. No. Definitely <laughs> it don't. not. Definitely no. not. So when and um, what was the reason you got into the industry? Um, the reason I got into the industry because I went through a, a, a real bad time of depression myself. Um, you know, I, I, I felt found myself, like I told you guys earlier, trying to figure out what to do. Um, I was going through some, some, some marital problems and a lot of stuff just, you know, spiraled. And when you have, you know, head injuries, which is, you know, a, a lot of us, we suffer somehow some different head of a head injury, you know, that could really put you in a really, really deep depression. And, um, I got into a real deep depression. Um, I, I found myself some help. And that's the thing with most guys. It's kind of hard to tell macho guys to go get them some help. Yeah. But, um, yeah. you know, by, by the grace of God, I, I, I found myself some help. And um, that help led me to doing what I'm doing now. And that's to help and care for people that were in the same position or not even worse than I was. And... So what was your first foray then into the cannabis industry once you, like, how'd you get, what's the first thing you did? Well, I'm going to tell you, this is, this is exactly how it happened. <laughs> tell us. Happened. It's just um, us. It's just him I created, and I. <laughs> I, I. I was, I, um, I created an athlete's treatment center in San Diego, California called the Crosby Sports Treatment Center. Beautiful. It's in San Diego, California, where we treated athletes with neurocognitive issues. So after the stint that I went through, I turned around and opened up an athlete's treatment center for other guys so they wouldn't go through the same things I went through. And over a period of two or three years, we helped over 150, 200 athletes. Wow. And with, with that being said, I continued to see the medicine that the insurance companies would try to send us. And mm -hmm. these are the medications that will turn normal people into junkies. And when I say junkies, you know, they're sending you all the, the Vicodin. They're sending you all the, the, the morphine. I mean, I can tell you from my injury from my Achilles, they gave me a, a, a hundred uh, pills of morphine with three refills. Now, if I was a person that took morphine, was a, a pill head, I could have easily turned into a junkie and been killed myself. Yeah. So I seen all of this happening. And then, um, you know, 
some things happened with the NFL where, you know, they didn't want to pay for a lot of guys' treatment. So we were forced to shut down. So therefore, it was like, okay, what do I do now? Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? I'm already teetering and tottering in the cannabis industry, doing my research here and there. Um, I got with a great friend of mine out of California named Matt Busario. He runs uh, the Gridiron Cannabis. Right. And what he did was he sent me to an, an event in, uh, in, in uh, uh, L.A., and it was a big-time 420 event put on by my guy, uh, Jim uh, 420, my guy, Jim Boosie. Right. So I said, I said, Jim, I told uh, Matt, I said, Matt, I don't know if I can go to this event because I didn't have, really didn't have the funds to get there, to do all the festivities. And he said, just go, have a good time. And when I went, it changed my whole life. The first person I ran into was Jim that puts on the 420 games. Um, I met up with Ricky Williams. And then I ran into a special friend of mine that's really a good friend of mine named Steve D'Angelo. Uh -huh. Yay, definitely. Mr. The Steve. The father, I guess the father of our industry here. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I call him <laughs> Uncle Steve. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I call him. I call him Uncle Steve. And um, Steve pulled me to the side and me and him just started talking and he heard my story. And next thing you know, he encouraged me to to keep going. And if I needed any questions to help him, to ask him, and that just put a light bulb. And um, I did a documentary on myself when I went back out to California to get into the cannabis industry. And I was sleeping in my car when I started this. Wow. I was sleeping dead in my car while I started this whole blueberry campaign. I I I, I, I can tell you this: it was something that was humbling. Because I knew I had to start from the ground floor. I knew I just couldn't jump in the industry and say, hey, guys, I'm here. I really had to do all my research, development. I had to do all the, the, the dirty work. So, therefore, I could be someone that could be respected and be someone like, you know, like Steve D'Angelo in this industry. Well, you're definitely uh, uh, making a name for yourself in that respect, you know, um, uh, I don't know. I, I, I heard your story, I think, the first time. It might have been in Phoenix, Arizona, for the Southwest Cannabis Conference and Expo that Dimitri Downing, a good friend of ours, uh, was putting on. Yeah, and, and during and during those those hard times, man, I tried to commit suicide, you know, um, staying on the railroad tracks, you know, just asking God to take my life and, and you know, make sure that my kids were stuff were okay. And um, like I said, it was just by the grace of God, man, some homeless people saved me. And it happened to be some homeless people that I gave clothes to before. Mm -hmm. So they, they saved me off those railroad tracks and, and allowed me to go get myself some help. And if it wasn't for them doing that, then I wouldn't be here speaking before you today. Well, definitely. I think, God, well, I know God wants you with us today. That's for sure. Because, you know, you, you, a lot of people don't realize, you know, the, the cannabis and the CBD uh, sector of our industry is it's about promoting health and healing. You know, and, you know, uh, I, I love the analogy that you gave me yesterday, the difference that you see for CBD and THC. Uh, yeah. Say that to our listeners. I thought that was a perfect analogy. Well, well, what my analogy is when, um, you know, when I talk to people about, you know, the cannabis industry and describing different things and trying to, because, you you, you know, like I know in this industry, um, a lot of people, they wouldn't understand some of the terminology and, you know, that we use in cannabis. So I try to break it down into terms that they can understand. And one of my analogies is, you know, when it comes to cannabis is THC is more like your Vicodin. It's more like your Seroquel. It's more like your, 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 you know, I want, I don't want to say morphine, but it, it's, it's more in that nature. When your CBD is more like your aspirin, your Advil, your Bayer, you don't feel anything, but you know it's working because your yes. head is gone, yes. your pain's yes. gone. Yes. So that's the way I try to break it down in this industry, and I try to reach people in different ways because you know, like I know, you know, not everyone is is educated on cannabis. Right. Not everyone right. knows what CBD is. They don't know what THC is. So I figured on oh, my method and my way of, you know, through the community service, plat you know, using my cannabis platform and doing community service, 
which is something that's always been a part of me. And I noticed that doing that community service and reaching people in that way, it opens up lots more doors than you can ever imagine, especially when you're doing it genuinely and it's something that's just in you. It opens up way more doors than you can imagine. And then now people are susceptible to listen to you instead of you having to beat down the door. Right. Well, I, I tell you what, you're at 100%. Not, 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 not only an activist for the cannabis and hemp industry, but an activist, a community activist. You know, I, I follow you and I see all of the really beautiful, loving work that you do for the uh, citizens in the panhandle, you know, after the hurricane. Let's talk about that for a minute. And then yeah, I definitely, definitely. want to uh, definitely we want to talk about a uh, blueberry uh, CBD products after that. That's OK. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's been a it's, it was been a humbling experience, man, especially being out here and seeing um, going through um, what we're going through here in the panhandle. Um, it's, it's hundreds and thousands of kids, children, you know, kids and women and men. They're sleeping out on the street right now. They're intense. Wow. And because of the, the, the huge hurricane disaster that swept through our area. And I just felt that it was my obligation to jump into action and to try to get as much help as possible. Um, we have a nonprofit called Boo Berry Cares. That's B-O-O-B-E-A-R-Y. I know. So, yeah, <laughs> the Cares with the K. And, um, and what we do is we do a lot of community service um through my nonprofit and my cannabis platform because you know um, I think that when you're when you're heavily involved in the community and people see you out there head first they when they see your brand they will they were they can record they they can you know they can it's hard to even find the word but they they will you know they see the true you your commitment they, to people yeah, the they, health of people the happiness of people you know without a doubt yeah. yeah i mean how long ago was that hurricane um, it was going on three months. And he's and still, still out there, big time still out there on a daily basis trying to help yeah. the community. So you're and, and, it's, and it's not just me, man. It's a bunch of different organizations sure. that's out here doing things. Um and I couldn't be I couldn't be lucky enough to have my girlfriend doing this stuff with me. She's been in the trenches with me. Her name is Sarah Galloway. She's been in the trenches with me doing this stuff too. And um we've just been really trying to help many people as possible and using our platform to help as much as we can. Good. So I've got uh, Booberry Cares is a 501c3 charity, and mm -hmm. you're accepting monetary donations for hurricane relief efforts in the uh, Panhandle, right. which is Florida. And um, I've got a graphic up here. I'll post it later in this feed. I can't do it while we're live, evidently. But mm -hmm. uh, you can donate by uh, via Venmo and PayPal. And Venmo mm -hmm. is at eddie-williams-48 and paypal is booberry cares spelled appropriately at, um at gmail.com and uh we'll yep. get that we'll get this up uh this, i guess i can't do it while we're live to right. post it in the feed but yeah, yeah. that's that's awesome well, i like how it is right now yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, can you see how we, we're doing it but I see. That's I see. tight. I love that. I <laughs> it's there. And, man, and when I tell you, it's been a it's been a blessing too to to be able to connect with a bunch of other different organizations. We've also connected with a huge organization out of Quincy, Florida, called the Eight Fifty Volunteers. Um, these people they're really going out doing some really really good things out in in the community. They're taking supplies. They're taking food clothes they're taking everything almost every week to certain areas and doing drop-offs as, as a lot of us are and you know it's just been like i said it's been a blessing to be in this position to where we can help people and you know like i said man it, it's a lot of people that need more help than than yourself you know so you, we have to get outside of ourselves and 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 see how can we help you know just not just if you don't have money hey we understand everybody don't have money but we all got stuff in our closet that we do not right. wear. Everybody got stuff in their closet. Yeah. So if you can't send money, you can or you can send supplies, you can send anything. Me personally, I even went into my own pantry and I went and got a lot of canned goods, foods and stuff and put it together just so I can also say, hey, I'm I'm giving back, you know, ten times more to myself. So, you know, if you if you don't have Cash, everybody, we understand mm -hmm. it's it's seasons, it's the holiday season, but we also have clothes, shoes, 
I mean, it's it's really cold out here. So we're trying to deliver blankets. We're trying to deliver, right. you know, uh, uh, sheets, pillows, everything to these people that are sleeping in Tent City, which is a thousand so people. Is wow. it really a Tent oh City goodness. with a thousand people in it? Man, wow. it's, it, it's, it's, it's about... It's, it's about three tent cities that we have out here with wow. thousands of people, and it's cold, it's raining. So we're trying to do everything we can to try to, to try to help bring this city back. And we kind of got overshadowed by the, the fires that was happening in California. You know, God bless those yeah. people too that, are, that right. were going through what sure. they were going through, but it seems like right after it happened, they forgot about us. And we're still in a state of emergency here. Right. So that's why I keep trying to, you know, put as much post up, try to make so many connections and do a lot of podcasts to, to make sure that they don't forget about us down here because it is bad. It's worse than Katrina here. Yeah. Well, we definitely need to think about something for the kids too. there, you know, some kind of toy drive, you know, yes. for them, you know, through you. You know? Yeah. And, it's, and, I, and I show everyone, too, when they go to my Booberry Cares Foundation page. You know, when they go to my page, they see all of the, the destruction that has happened here. And they're like, we didn't know. We didn't know it was like that. I have people on my page from Colorado, from Washington, from different parts of the country. And if I wouldn't have been showing these people, you know, what we're going through, they don't even know. Yeah. They wouldn't even know. And it was a, a, a Category 5 hurricane that hit at 155 miles per hour. You know, it's, it's just, it's shameful, you know, that really mainstream media, you know, they just want to beat up each other on who's a Republican, who's a Democrat, yeah. when you got suffering people in the in the United States of America. You know, we yeah. got, you know, it's hard to believe that, you know, we have three tent cities in the panhandle of Florida. It shouldn't be. Yeah. And, the, and these are all people that have lost their homes. I mean, they're, right. these are people that had homes, they had jobs. And now their jobs are wiped out, their homes are wiped out, and it's like, where do you go for help? And right. you know, like I know, FEMA's not always going to be there. You know, yeah. FEMA's there to help, but they're not always going to be there. So it takes people in the community, like myself, like the 850 volunteers, like the churches, like everyone else in the community, to come together and and help build this city back together. I want to say hi to a couple people who've tuned in. Um, Devin Sharp, Amy Bolt Sharp, Melanie Rose Rogers. Amy's thank you, in Clinton. the house. We had a, somebody who's wanting us to fire up a blunt. And Devin. Our, our next door neighbors would have something to say about that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they got, probably would. We got a drug company next door to us. I, we've, we're on our best. Well, see, well, we're the place. bad drugs. They're the good drugs, they think. Of, yeah. You know, yeah. 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 Any pharmaceutical <laughs> company, you know? Oh, we, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So what, let's get into Booberry CBD. I, I show that shirt to the. I love that shirt. There we go. Nice. <laughs> Yay. It's love see it. See through on our. It's keying him out. That's funny. Was it? Yeah. I mean, just a little bit. Okay. Let me. I'm gonna turn that off. There. Wait. I don't know. Ain't it's that magic. Just a, it's magic. That, I love it. it looks great. Isn't that just the, the, the perfect little bear you want to see? <laughs> you know what? He's like the most beautiful, cute, happy bear. You know? <laughs> and and that was my whole point behind the name. Yeah. Um, yeah. you know, when I when I was thinking about branding, I was thinking about names and I was thinking about, you know, how could I reach people and when people see my brand or they see my logo they will be intrigued to know what it is, but at the same time, they will feel a sense of warmth and a sense of welcomeness by looking at it and seeing it. So, you know, I, I said, you know what? Everybody always called me Boo Bear growing up anyway. Hey, Boo Bear, Boo Bear. <laughs> so, you know, I've always taken that approach where I've always been bigger than everyone else growing yeah, I was going to say, the bears means you're huge. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're huge. And, and, and I've always got called a, a big teddy bear. So, you know, I wanted that brand to st stand out because if people seen me in that way, you know, I wanted people to see that brand in that way and take the brand the same way they see me. Yeah. My t-shirt collection now has pretty much fully evolved into industry t-shirts. Yeah. The amount of t-shirts that I have that I could comfortably wear to like uh, Cub Scouts or something <laughs> is like 
I don't know, have something from like early Cub Scouts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Scouts. I tried to teach a merit badge on entrepreneurship. Did um, you really? Uh, yeah, yeah. I I was gonna fight for that. My kid decided it. Yeah. When we went to Boy Scouts, but yeah, <laughs> I'm all about normalizing. But you've got an industry shirt that you could just wear with a yeah. without uh, any concern. Right. From yeah. A, that's that's pretty cool. Oh man. yeah. So and, what? And, 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 uh-huh. People with the shirt, they they love it. I mean, everywhere we go, people are like, man, what is that? And then we have CBD on the back, and a lot of people, you know, some people that don't know what CBD is, once they see the bear and they see CBD, now it's an open discussion. Yes. So once we tell them really what it is, then you get the answers of, so my mom can take this, my grandmother. Right. So yes, and that's when you start to open up your audience. And I tell everybody, it's. We're not trying to get the people that we do have. We already have a lot of people in the industry. We want to get the ones that we don't have, and that's how we continue to change a culture. Right. I love that. Yep. I agree with it wholeheartedly. Case in point. <laughs> well, you know, talking to the people who are already on our side naturally, I think that um, yeah, he, a, he, a different he, sports sponsorship yeah. opportunities, you, uh, you can go talk to people and <laughs> – um, yeah, I love bring that. them onto your side. Yeah, I, I, I think the first time I read about you was uh, when you uh, had that logo uh, for NASCAR. Yeah, and NASCAR. Oh, hold on, and that was what the day before the race they yeah. wanted to pull. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're coming around. Yeah, well, they're they coming will. around. Well, 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 you know what? That's why. That's why my my method and my approach <clears throat> has really been like it is because. You know, it's something that, you know, uh, you know, the cannabis industry is something that shouldn't be, you know, uh, hush, hush or something right. that is you know, pushed away that people can't talk about. Because if we can talk about alcohol, which really is one of the deadliest, you know, uh, Amen. you know, deadliest drugs on the planet. If we can talk about alcohol, then we should be able to talk about cannabis freely. And that's something that helps millions of people across the board. Right. You know, and that's why I, I advocate I advocate the way I do and I, I talk about it the way I do. I you know, I, I live it, I breathe it because, you know, it's it's something that's helping people and it's not hurting people. And and I Amen. and I'm a person that stand up for what I believe in, no matter who's looking or who's talking and you know, when I first started this, people was gonna say, What about the NFL? What they gonna say? I'm like, NFL don't pay me. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> they don't. Pay so I, I, I can, I can give, I can give two craps of what they think about it. Right. But at the same time, I want them to, when they do hear it or they do think about it, they know that it, this is in a way of athletes are trying to take our own health in our own hands right. and help us and not hurt us. Right. Okay. Hey, show our viewers uh, your products. Let's talk about them. Okay. I got the blueberry cream, the blueberry pain cream, 150 milligrams. Um, it's been one of our top sellers. Man, it, it's been uh, going off the shelf like crazy. Um, you can always go to our website to order. It's under blueberryproducts.com. Um, and it's, it's like I said, it's something that's really has been sweeping mm-hmm. off the shelves. Um, I have my 500 milligram. As you can see, my 500 yeah. milligram tincture, blueberry tincture. Yeah. And we do a lot of cooking with this too. So if you go nice. on my page, my blueberry products Facebook page or the website, you'll see that we do a lot of cooking with um with the oil too as well. Because we don't want people just to have one way of, of using it. We want them to have many different ways of using it. And that's another fun way to use your product and, and really get the, the, the proper uh, medication that you need. Well, the first quarter next year, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, we're going to have um, uh, CBD, uh, cooking with CBD uh, show, cooking with THC show. Uh, we'll have some cook-offs, a lot of fun things for next year. We'll have to have you on the cook-off, you know, for oh, CBD. Oh, yeah, I'm your man for the cook-off. I'm your man for the cook-off. <laughs> because uh, I, I've, done, I've done a few things on the Food Channel Network, too, as well, with my uh, good partner and friend, um, Eddie Jackson. Me and him was roommates nice. in college, and now he's the Food Channel Network star. So uh, I've been on the Food Channel Network doing some things with him. And, you know, living in New Orleans uh, all those years in New Orleans, you learn how to cook. 
Yeah. You learn how to yeah. cook all types of dishes. But I knew how to cook before then because my mama taught me. <laughs> my mama taught me too. I love it. You, you know what? Getting back to your cream. Uh, we briefly spoke about it. Um, yeah. I take CBD every day and, you know, I think I'm a lot better off as far as physically for that. I still have some aches and pains and that's where the, the cream comes in. You know, a chiropractor yeah. broke my neck six, uh, eight years ago. And, um, after going through the nightmare of addiction on opiates, you know, and getting on Suboxone and starting to smoke marijuana again, in four months I got off uh, opiates. But, you know, I'm always going to have pain in my neck. Mm. Sometimes it's just, it's fine. It's just there. But sometimes I need the cream that you're talking about the to go on the outside. And it's unbelievable how the cream works. Yeah. Transdermal you know? CBD it, is the yeah. real deal. It it's, is. It really it is. Firstly, from playing in the NFL, you know, we we uh we run into each other and it's like car crashes. Yeah. So it yeah, is. And, and the average person so couldn't nice. imagine um co colliding with bodies for for ninety minutes like that, and uh, now going home and saying, hey, uh, let's go to the park or hey, let's go to the mall. Or, you know, you, you have no idea what your body is put through, and that's why I developed these products because we have the most extensive pain out there. Right. So I wanted to make sure that I, I, I created a product that, you know, a lot of people can relate to that have, you know, real chronic pain. And it's been, like I said, it's been a real blessing to be able to be in this position to provide people with, you know, the gel tablets, the tinctures, the, the cream. And um, right. I just plan to keep moving up from there and, and, and trying to help more people. And the more people you help, is the more people you bless. Amen. I love that. I also love that. <laughs> <laughs> so I was looking around for a, a marker. I, oh, there we go. I want to do this real quick. You, um, I believe, know um, Amy Hilterbrand. Of course. From, yep. And so I just want to say that the U.S. government has a patent on cannabinoids. It's patent number 6630507. Google it. Yep, I know that patent. I know that patent. Yeah. Yeah. Why why is there a patent on something that has no benefit though? I don't know. I to don't be know. on schedule 1, a drug must meet three criteria, one of which is that it has to have no accepted medical use. Yeah. And yeah. Um, the fact that the government has had That's a patent so stupid. on cannabinoids as neuroprotectants <laughs> and antioxidants for like almost two decades now, I think. Yeah. Um, makes it just absolutely illogical. Uh it has to meet all three of those criteria. Right. It obviously does not. They obviously know that it does right. not. Um, and that's, uh, I'm looking forward to the uh, lawsuit against, I don't know, I guess they have to amend it to whoever the current AG is going to be. Right. But with, um, uh, gosh, uh, Sebastian and Jagger Cott and um, Alexis Bortel, Dean Bortel, right, and right. Marvin Washington, another right. former NFL player, right. and um, Jose Belen. Right. Um, are suing over Don't that patent. My boy Ricky. Don't Ricky, my boy Ricky. Oh, is yeah. He? And Ricky Williams. Yes. Well, you, you know what? He, he'll never get the credit for it, but uh, he's the one that really uh, put a spotlight on marijuana in the NFL. Yeah. I mean, I, I you know, I, I'm a Miami Dolphin fan. I'm sorry, but you know, when he was with the Dolphins, uh, you know, he just kept on dropping dirty. Which it's stupid because well, the NFL well, players should be able to smoke, you know, to help heal their bodies, their mind, their soul. But uh, yeah, he ended up getting what suspended for a year. Yeah, and then he took some time off himself. And yeah, um, you know, I played with, I played with Ricky in New Orleans right. with Saints, and me and Ricky were really, really good close friends there. And me and him. Uh, medicated many of days together, <laughs> and right. and when I. And this is and this is my my honest to God truth. Um, not too many people connected with Ricky because Ricky was a different type of fellow. Yeah. Um, Ricky was a player that he really had to trust you, um, and he really had to feel some type of connection with you to even have a conversation with you. Yeah. And 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 that's just the way he was due to you know some of the things that he was going through, and that was one of the ways that me and Ricky connected was through cannabis and me and him uh you know we connected so good to where i had a lot of my friends that i would bring up from tallahassee 
that would connect with Ricky too. And you had lots of guys on the team saying, man, Ricky don't talk to nobody. How are you connecting with you and you're a rookie? You know, <laughs> you know I'm saying, and I'm saying to myself, you guys just don't know how we connect. <laughs> but uh, he, was one, he was one of the smartest players I've ever played with. Ricky knew everyone's uh, uh, duty and their job at their position. He even knew what he was supposed to do. Um, it was plenty of times where Ricky uh, put me in the right position and gave me the right play, um, and he played running back. Right. And that just shows you really how smart he really is. And, you know, for that stigma to come out to where, you know, stoke people that smoke marijuana are stoners and they're dumb and they don't want to do anything, that is a total, total lie. Because I can tell you probably 75 to 80 percent of, of professional athletes, especially in the NFL, use cannabis. Sure, sure. Well, I wish they would get louder. Come out. Come out. I guess you know yeah, if, if they all walked. Shitty. I as guess if they the all top. walked out, they would have to really uh, take a harder look at it. Yeah, you know. They're yeah, because the the, the the medications that they shove you are something that you know, I mean, if you want to have tip top athletes, you don't shove these type of medications at your athletes. Right. You don't put this. T- and it, and if we want to say, hey, we we care about what we're putting into our athlete's body, but the only thing you care about is that dollar that you're getting from big pharma to, to put it inside of our body. Right. And then, you know, you, you don't have a choice because if you're trying to come off the, the injured list, you got to take these medications that they give you. And then you see little Johnny behind you. That's like a horse in a stable. That's ready to take your position. <laughs> right. So what do you do? You take the pills, go out there and play injured. There you go. You know, think, think about it. You know how many games you guys have seen when that guy goes into that little tent, and he says, oh, he's hurting. And he goes in the locker room limping on a cart. And then he comes back full-fledged walking like <laughs> nothing ever happened. He just didn't get the missing Yagi. He just didn't get the missing <laughs> Right. No, he didn't. Right. right. Took that medication that those doctors gave him. Right. And those are, those are, those are medications that I still feel to this day. I mean, we used to get a Toradol shot before the game. Right in your right. butt. I mean, I can still feel the little, the little, you know, the raised skin on my butt where I used to get it every day. And then I tell everybody, the motions that you go through and the NFL are not normal. Right. So when I take this shot, you know, I go out on the field and now I'm a raging animal ready to, 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 to destroy everything in front of me. So think about it. When you before the game, you see, you hear the national anthem. You see players crying. You see some players in a different mind mode. Before the game, we're shaking hands with the guys that we're playing against because we're all in the NFL. Then when the game starts, we act like we don't know you and we're trying to destroy you. <laughs> and well, after- hopefully that's on the other team. <laughs> My point is exactly. Yeah. So after the game, right. now you're back friends. So look at these different emotional roller coasters that you're put through every right. week. Yeah. So those type of those type of habits, it 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 makes you who you are. So yeah. when guys are on the outside of the game and they come into like a confrontation, we don't have that green light, that that yellow light or that red light that says, "Hey, wait, stop, think about what you're doing." No, because we've been trained to not think but act. But right. that's where, but that's where the the medical cannabis comes in at. Yeah. Because that tells us to wait, stop, think about what you're doing. Oh, this is the best decision. Now this is what I go with. Other than picking up that bottle that has Bud Light or Budweiser on it that they're selling in the stadium that you know when I have too many of these, it's going to turn me into a whole other person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Whole sicker person. Yep. Um, yep. Whole well, this has been person. one of my favorite shows. Hey, and man, it, listen, you know, hey, I'm going to give you all kind of information that you need. I'm going to keep it light. I'm going to keep it tight. <laughs> <laughs> Any last words, boo? Yeah, man, uh, about it, uh, everything. Just man, let, I go want, over everything real I, my, quick. My last words are um, I just want people to, to live life, man, have fun. Um, we all in this life are going through certain things. Yep. You know, I, I'm going through something right now. That's that's the heaviest thing that I've ever even have had to deal with. Yeah. And it's the fight for my kids. 
And, you know, we all going through certain things, but we all got to, you know, keep keep focused on really what's the goal and, and, and what we're really here to do and, and have fun and live life because there's so many people that have cancer, they have liver problems, they have this and have that. Right, right now, I, I got a sick grandmother right now and she's she has um, lymphoma. And she is really, really going through it right now. But the the thing is, her thing is she likes to stay positive. Anytime something negative comes up, she wants to shut it down and just stay in that positive light. And I think that's what we should. This is the industry. We, we're here to help care for people and have fun at the same time. Yeah. Yep. It's perfect. Yeah. I love it. And go get your Booberry on BooberryProducts.com, baby. BooberryProducts.com. BooberryProducts.com. Go get it today. And please, uh, donate. Donate to Booberry Cares. I can't see that. It's 501c3. Yeah, Booberry Cares is 501c3. And you can donate. And I'll put these links up. Yeah, we'll put the links up. Venmo, PayPal. Yeah. Um, I'll get this... uh, I'll get this posted and, as soon as we get off. And people can go to and people can go to our our foundation page too, our Blueberry Cares Foundation page, and they can see all the great work that you know great. that we're doing. We're putting in a lot of work, so people, you know, we're taking volunteers to go out with us all the time. So you know, we want to make sure that we're having our stamp um, on 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 this this state and trying to help many as people as we can and use our platform because. You know, a, a lot of people have platforms, but they use it sometimes for bad or a different reason. Sure. But I, I want to make sure that, you know, in this cannabis industry that we're really respected for really going way and beyond to help people, not just in products, not right. just in products. Everyone can make products. Everybody can make the same different type of products. But what else is your brand doing to help change the culture that's which going to eventually change the world. Amen. I couldn't say it better, yep. said it better myself. Yep. It's true. It's you know, I, I mean, you know, you can have the same products, but I'd rather back the company that's really investing back in the community. And I don't mean it doesn't have to be with money, but with time and effort. And Showing love, up, yes. like being Boone there does. when you're supposed to be there. Yep. Being that, a, a that leader. Most, that's the most valuable thing that you can ever give somebody is your time. Yep. Amen. And I learned I learned that doing, especially doing professional sports, because we go out into the community a lot doing professional sports, and you should see these people's faces, these kids' faces when you go into children's hospitals and it's gotta all be these beautiful. different places. Yeah, you see these people's faces because you're there. Yeah. You know, it's a lot of people that own companies that I'm gonna send the money and I'm a, I'm gonna just say, hey, I'm gonna send the money and I'm donating it. No, no, no. We want to be that company that's out there head first that's in the community, that's in the trenches with you because we can empathize with you. We don't want to sympathize with you, but we want to empathize with you. I love it. Well, thank you for giving us the most valuable thing that you have, which is your time. Amen. It's, we've we spread really a lot of knowledge it. today, and it's been just a an amazing interview. Thank yeah. you so much for Man, anytime y'all want Booberry back on the show, man, just call me 1-800-BOO-BERRY. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. We'll have you back on the first quarter of next year sometime. Okay? Yeah. Thanks, yeah, Boo. Anytime, awesome. man. Anytime. Thanks for having me, guys. We really oh, appreciate thanks. it. Thanks, thanks so man. much. Yay. <laughs> Take care, buddy. All right, brother. Yeah. That was nice. That was so cool. Yeah. He, yeah. He, he, you know what? I, uh, I met him a few years ago at the Phoenix Expo and uh, just sat there and talked to him. He's just such a good person and a humble person. And But what I see more from him than I see from a lot of people in our industry, you know, he does give his time out there to the community. You know, I, I've, I've followed him ever since, and he's always out there. Uh, the hurricane that they have had in the panhandles, he, he's out there, if not every day, every other day, trying to do yeah. something, trying to help, you know, uh, help the cause and help the people that, you know, are living in tent cities. Yeah. That's shocking, isn't it? It is shocking. Yeah. It's, um, uh, it makes me want to go Google that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, hey, support Booberry Cares Foundation. Uh, definitely uh, show them some love, uh, you know, and go to Booberry Products, is it? Booberry and uh, buy, buy something. That pain cream, tinctures, whatever. But for me, I love the pain cream. I really do. I need it almost on a daily basis sometimes. I want to say that uh, today we're doing another show. Yeah. Um, the Thursday show we're doing on. Tuesday, okay. because we have a, a very special guest who um, 
is uh, named, I don't know if it's Myler, I'm going to say Mila Jansen, right. um, author of How I Became Hash Queen. And I heard she's a riot. Yeah, I talked to her. Really? At, yeah, at so the she's, show. She's, she's coming on at, I mean, at, at Chloe's show. noon. So yeah, nice. We'll get, as soon as we kick you out of here, then yeah. I'm going to, maybe I'll keep wearing my suit. No. Uh, I'll change. I'll change. <laughs> but, um, the fake out's on. You guys have no clue. We're in bathing suits. Yeah. But anyways. Yeah. Uh, we thank you. Yeah. Great show. And yeah. good job. Next we Tuesday? Managed. Are we on next Tuesday? Uh, we, uh, what not, day is then that? I'm going to be disappointed. Tuesday is That's the a 20th. Oh, no, no, no. The 18th. Tuesday's the 18th. 18th. Yeah, yeah, that'd be fantastic. Uh, we'll be on the 18th, but I don't think we'll be on the following Tuesday. That's Christmas Day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Unless you can get Santa Claus on. You never know. <laughs> you never know. Let's keep that out there, up in the air. Thanks so much. Yeah, thanks for joining Great show, everybody. guys. Thank you.